Exodus chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16. Beginning at verse 18. Proverbs chapter 16, beginning at verse 18. Amen. Proverbs chapter 16, beginning at verse 18. I was, it slipped my mind. Um, let us keep Sister Roland in her prayers for loss in her family. Teresa Roland. Sister Pete and the loss of her uncle. Amen. I'm not missing anybody, am I? Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before fail. Better is it to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good, and he so trusteth in the Lord. Happy is he. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that have it, but the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as an honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. There is a way that seems right to a man. It's my key verse. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. He that laboreth, laboreth for himself, for his mouth craveth it of him. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and his lips there is a burning fire. A froward man soweth strife, and a whisper separateth chief friends. You may be seated. For a few moments, I want to talk from the subject. This is what pride will do for you. This is what pride will do for you. I have about myself. Uh, this is something I deal with. I've, yeah, I, I, that I do deal with. Uh, all the time. I'm just talking about Brandon. Because it is not hard for me to get lifted up in Brandon. It's actually rather easy for me to do. Maybe for some of y'all it's kind of hard, but I can get lifted up in myself just being by myself. I don't need no cheerleader in the back of me. I can just do that. And what the Lord has been showing me now for a few years now is that uh, 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 you cannot stand before the people and talk about how good I am, talk about the Lord, how good I am, what all he has done and what he will do and how he made a way. But in the back of your mind, you think to yourself, this is all me. Talking about yourself. That I did this. Has anybody ever been in a situation where uh, you say to God, okay, God, you can take a break. I got this one. God, I got this. Yeah, I heard some people say no. I'm, I can say I'm, I'm, this, I'm, this is an example of myself. I have been in situations where not out of my mouth did I verbally say it, but in my actions I almost said, God, I got this one. You can hold, go, go, go sit down. You, you can go back up there. I got it. In my actions... I have done that. My personal life, uh, with military in my career, I've said, God, I've done that. I've been able to make my rank that I am currently now in less time than folk who has been here longer have done it. And I thought to myself when I, got, when I put on a rank and I said, hey, you know, I've been taught to say thank you, Lord, when he give you stuff. But in my mind, the way I acted, I said, oh, man, I passed that test. Yeah, they, they were supposed to give me that evaluation because I'm the best. Can't nobody do it like Petty, uh, Petty Officer Rambis. Can't nobody do it like him. If I said, it's going to move because I'm Petty Officer Rambis. That's how, I, that's how I thought about it. And God 
would give me a position. God is the only somebody I know that gives you a gift that rivals who he is in your life. Think about that. Look at Adam and Eve. Adam was all right, walking around in the garden by himself. God put him asleep and gave him Eve. And he looked at Eve and said, flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. And before you knew it, he ended up putting Eve in a spot where, uh, where God was supposed to be. We don't, God is the only one that will give us a gift that will rival who he's supposed to be in our life. Pride will do that to you. You know what pride really is? It's idolatry. Pride is idolatry. Thinking that you are some great somebody to where you cannot accept the wisdom of others that have walked in your footsteps. You cannot accept the help of other people that got your resource. Pride is something. God is working with me on that. Pride to do it if you allow it. It'll creep in there and you won't even know what's happening. Yes, God blessed you with this and he blessed you with that and he gave you the ability uh, to do this. But before you know it, you step back and catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror and you say, I look pretty good. Yeah, yeah, you get a few pats on the back after singing a song or after teaching a, a, a scripture or after preaching a sermon and you say, yeah, 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 I pulled that one, Doc. And before you are even able to get to your car, you didn't forgot. If it wasn't for God, you wouldn't even be in the position. If it was not for the Holy Ghost, you wouldn't have had the words to say. You would have got up there and talked about yourself and not talked about what does say of the Lord. Pride to do that. What pride will also do is it will cause you to think you're right when you're wrong. You know, you know people that are just so proud that they can't ever apologize? They just, you look, sister, you wrong. Brother, you wrong. I got all the evidence and you know I'm right. You wrong. But because of pride, you have convinced yourself that the wrong you did was the right thing. And now you didn't got so high up about yourself, even when the Lord has convicted you, you so high that you can't even come down. Pride to do that. You think you're right. But pride to keep you up so high. And the devil will convince you, well, you know if you come down, the folk will leave you. You know if you come down, ain't nobody going to follow you. You know if you change your mind, ain't nobody going to listen to you. You know that if you do this or you do that, ain't nobody, ain't nobody going to be with you no more. That's the devil. God wants us to be humble, teaching us humility. Have I got a witness here? That's what the, that's what the Holy Ghost will do for you. It will lead and guide in all truth. And when you're wrong, the Holy Ghost will say, listen, you need to chill out for a minute. You need to come down. Have I got a witness? The pride will lead to destruction. Scripture says the way that seem right. It looks like it's the right thing to do. It makes sense. Why does it make sense? Well, we've been doing it like this all this time. Ain't nobody ever said it was wrong. It makes sense. The way we've been doing it has helped people. It makes sense. The way we have been doing it, uh, we've been getting pats on the back and participation. It makes sense. But one thing we have to ask ourselves is, is this what God said? Y'all ain't talking back to me. I said, is this what God said? I know how you did it was good then. And ain't nobody say nothing about it. But nobody stepped back to say, is this what God would have me do? Yeah, I, I, I know you want to preach, but is this what God have me do? Ever since I was a boy, I've always heard, boy, you look like a preacher. You walk like a preacher. You talk like a preacher. Somebody told me I got the, the back of my head look like the back of a preacher's head. I have no idea what that means. But if God had not called me to preach, I would have been in the wrong spot sending people to hell because I don't got the call of it. Are you doing what God said do? Are you letting folk puff you up in pride? Are you allowing people to take the spot of God in your life? Because you know what happens when people take the spot of God in your life. When the people die, then God dies. You've put a person on the throne and put God on the back burner. And because it, 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 is, it is appointed under man wants to die, when that person dies, then your God dies. So who do you follow? 
some of us done put our own selves up on the pedestal. Have I got a witness here? Thinking that we so great and the church won't go on without us. I'm the only one that can count the money. People, church been counting money since before you got saved. The church will still go on. The church doors can't get open unless I got the key. We, well, somebody had the key before you. The choir won't sing unless I'm in the choir. We've been singing that song for years. Trust me, it's not new. The deacon board can't begin unless I'm there. It's been deacons that's been dead longer than you've been ordained a deacon. God's work will still go on. But pride would have you put yourself up there. When God says, humble yourself. Have I got a witness this morning? The way seems right, but that path leads to destruction. The wise man in his heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of his lips increase of learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that have it, but the instructions of fools is folly. Church, you got to be careful who you're listening to. Got to be careful. Let me, let me tell you something. I have not known God to be as a blabbermouth and a gossiper since I've been a preacher. Everybody got something to tell me that the Lord told them to tell me. Let's stop lying on God. Stop lying. Man of God, woman of God, people of God, everybody can't be in your ear. You can't allow that to happen because everybody don't got your best interest at heart. Have I got a witness here? Those in church and outside the church. That, that, that brother and that sister ain't always got your best interests at her. Some people like to be the puppeteer. You know, you in the front, but they the strings up here, and you doing all this stuff you're doing, but the strings is the one that's controlling you because they in your ear. Everybody can't be in your ear. Have I got a witness here? There's a, there's a, there's a story in the Bible when the king had a sorcerer in his ear. Have I got a witness here? And as a result of him having the sorcerer in his ear, he was leading the entire area to hell, following after witchcraft. You got to be careful who you got in your ear. I don't care how old the person say they is. There's some old fools. Those exist. I've met them. I met, I met some. Don't say amen back to me. But I, I, have you met some old fools? Don't say amen. Don't say it. Just look at me. I met some old ones and some young ones. And can I be honest with you, church? I've, I, I've, been, I've been a fool before, not listening. Letting my pride get in the way because of how I felt about a thing and putting on a back burner what it is I heard God say about something. Got to listen to God. Somebody told me once, they say, Ram, man, when you talk, everybody listen to you. And I thought to myself, oh God. Not oh God, like you bless me. Like, oh God, Lord, everybody listen to me? I don't care how much I preach and teach, I will say, I, and I have said, and has done the wrong thing. Not acting under the power of the Holy Ghost. So when that person said that to me, I have to take inventory over who it is God allows in my space. Because when I stand before God, he's gonna ask me, when such and such was in your presence and you did this, you know, didn't you know better? Because folk are paying attention to what you say. So as brothers and sisters and, and followers of Christ, there is a certain type of decorum we must have. There is a certain type of way we got to act. We cannot just jump up and fuss and cuss and fight every time we hear something. We got to step back and say, God, now how you want me to go about this? That's what I have to do today. I'm telling you that the truth. That's what I've been having to do all week. Lord, how do you want me to go about this? What should I say to the people? What should I say to that person? How should I uh, approach this situation? Because if I go over there and Brandon, the way I know Brandon can be, I can be right and still lose the person. Have I got a witness here? My grandmother used to say, it ain't what you say is how you say. She still say it actually. It ain't what you say is how you say. You can be completely right about a thing and then lose the soul. Pride what have you think that you are better than folk. In the church. Y'all looking at me like I ain't telling the truth about that one. Uh, it will have you think you're better than people, even in the church, because of who your daddy was, and who your mama was, and who your uncle was, and who this person was, and who that person was. When God is saying, if you don't repent, you won't go to the same hell. Proud to have you thinking you're better than folk. Y'all know what threw the devil down, don't you? Pride. The devil got a glimpse of himself walking past the mirror in heaven. He said, I look good. So I'm going to ascend to the highest mountain and to the highest height. He wanted his throne to be above God. 
And there's only one somebody that sits on the throne, and that's God himself. But I want you to know, church, that if, 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 if you must have it your way, if you got to have it your way, individually and collectively as a local body here, if we got to have it our way, uh, God will let it happen. Oh, that's the children of Israel over there when they wanted Saul. They wanted a king. God wanted them to be a theocracy, but they wanted a democracy. And so God says, all right, I'm going to give you Saul. I'm going to give him to you. Now, the Bible never says Saul didn't believe in God, but Saul was a, he was a horrible king. Saul was stone cold crazy. Disobedient, no disobedient to the man of God. The man of God gave him some specific orders. Kill everything, don't bring nothing back. He brought back gold and cattle and women. When he had no business doing that. If you want your way, God will give it to you. Has anybody ever been in a position when God told you yes or no to something and you fought God tooth and nail and God said, you know what, son? You can have this. And then when you got it, you begged them to take it away. You wanted that thing so bad till you got it. The Lord has blessed my wife and I to talk to couples, young couples, that are thinking about getting married. They come to us. We don't ask them. They come to us. They look at us and say, we want our marriage to be like yours. And I'll be saying to myself, Lord Jesus. I ain't saying my, my, my marriage is bad. It's just saying sometimes. <laughs> oh, she, I know I can say that. She said amen. She said amen before y'all did. I know I'm right. But they come to us and they want you know, so a little advice on marriage. And I always say, and we both always say to them couples, are you sure you're supposed to be with this person? Are you sure? Or is this something, is it, you know, or your flesh just itchy? And you want something right now real quick. My wife and I tell folk, we don't try marriage, we do marriage. This ain't, we ain't gonna try it out and if it don't work, we leave it alone. No, no, it will, it will work. And so we tell people that and we say, uh, do y'all do just want this? Or y'all really want to do this, or is this something y'all trying now? Oh, we in love, we in love. And they say that, and I'm looking at the dude because uh, I was in that dude position once upon a time, and I'm looking at him, and I'm looking at the way he look at his woman, and I'm saying, dude, that ain't love. Let me, let me take you in the backyard real quick. Let me turn these ribs over while I talk to you. That ain't love. I, I, I saw what your eyes looked at. That's not love, brother. You can find that anywhere in the city. Did, are, are you really supposed to be with this girl? Because you can get with a woman with a bad body, but she got a bad attitude. Everything she say is contentious. Everything she say is an argument, vice versa. He, you, you can't trust him to go to the corner store and come right back? You wanted him that bad? If you really want your way, God will give it to you. And then now you're begging yourself, God, take this away. God said, no, this, this thing got to run its course now. You thought you wanted it. Israel thought they wanted song. Even the prophet was crying. God had to go to him and say, how long are you going to keep on crying seeing as how I rejected King Saul? It's over with. I let them have what they thought they wanted. Pride will completely block God out because you can't hear him for hearing yourself. Have I got a witness this morning? That's what pride will do. Pride will make you fall so low to where even when God extends his hand for you to get up, you cannot get up. It'll put you up there so high to where even where God is trying to humble you down and he said, I've forgiven you, you can't come down for the sake of people. Church, it is my honest prayer that we get past that point. Can I be honest with you? The Lord has given me this, the gift of discernment. And every now and again, he'll, he'll give me the He'll let me prophesy and let me see some things. And one thing that I have seen within us is pride. I've seen it. It's been in the house. Pride. I'm better than the other. Or I can't, or I don't need to listen to this person because either I've been doing it longer or because this person is younger than me. So I, ain't got no, I don't need to listen to you. Meanwhile, you go over to somebody else that's older and they say something that ain't of God and you take it as the word of God. Meanwhile, the younger person has spoken of the Holy Ghost and you can't receive it. That's pride. Pride to have you uh, walking past people or intentionally waiting until they go into church first so you don't got to speak to them. 
That's pride. In the book of Job, I think it's the, 30, the 40th or the 41st chapter, it talks about the spirit of the Leviathan. The Leviathan is a beast in scripture. It's actually a metaphor for a spirit. The Leviathan is talking about his neck, how it sticks his neck out, lifts it up. It's a spirit of pride because we ain't supposed to be lifting our, our, lift, sticking our head up. God is the lifter of our head. We ain't supposed to be doing that on our own, but the spirit of Leviathan would have you sticking your head up and sticking your neck out, almost kind of you know, looking down at folk while you're talking. You're teaching the Bible and you're preaching the Bible, but your head is up. You're singing in the choir and you're serving on the board, but your head is up, the spirit of Leviathan. Read about that. It's a spirit of pride. And can I tell you, it's been here for a minute. Here the towel. It's been here for a minute. And some of us in here are guilty because we've seen it. And we didn't do nothing about it. Those that can't accept wisdom from the older folk. I'm going to tell you, God is moving. But everything that the older saints know ain't put to the grave. Some of that stuff we do need. Amen. Amen. Wisdom is what we need. I can't lead without some wisdom. I need, some old, I need somebody older than me to help me. Amen. I can't just go out there and, and, and get married and have kids and I have no wisdom on how to lead a family. I need to talk to somebody that's been doing it. Amen. If God was to ever call me to go over to some other house and be the shepherd over there, I'm going to need some wisdom from the folk there. Lord, show me how to do it. Yes, he's called me, but you got some wisdom on you. We can't have, we can't have pride in our spirit. Pride will cause folk to walk in that door and turn around and walk right back out. Because they see the spirit of pride. That haughty spirit. I'm, I, I, I can only talk to you if me and you dressing alike. We smell the same and look the same and we look like we got the same amount of money. We look like we got a little bit more than the person next to you. Everybody in here broke. And we try to look and stick our get that Leviathan spirit and stick our neck out over people. The spirit of the Lord is saying, get rid of it before I give you what you want. You want it so badly. God has had some mercy and grace over here at the lighthouse. He really has. Because we ain't got nowhere near what we should have deserved. What, 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 what we deserved. Huh? God has kept us, walked with us, and he's talked with us. Reminded us that we still belong to him. And in the midst of the spirit of God, in the midst of his presence, when the anointing is flowing, we still got Leviathan. Right. Right. Won't give him the praise he's due. Proud spirit. A spirit of pride. Church, if the Lord didn't tell you to do it, don't you do it. If the Lord didn't say be in that, in that position... You ain't got no business over there. I know you work at the bank, but the bank's money and God's money is two different pieces of change. Have I got a witness here? I know you're a counselor at the job, but that don't mean you are qualified to counsel God's people. Because on the job, you are subject to and, uh, and, and to, to and, uh, different things. But here in the, in, in the church, we got to uh, go off and govern ourselves off what the word of the Lord say. Your job may not like what your Bible say. Be where you're supposed to be. Just because you did it over there, don't let that proud spirit come in and say, I can do it over here. That's what the Bible say. There's a way that seems right. And we did a whole bunch of stuff that seemed right. But ask yourself, how many souls do you think may have been lost because of what it is we thought we was doing that was right? How many mouths did we not feed because we thought we was doing something right? How many folk did we not clothe because we thought we was doing something right? I know when a brother and a sister come in off the street, they make a little noise, and we think it's right to pick them up and carry them out. But the truth of the matter is, if they're coming in off the street with a devil in them, we as the people of God ought to have enough power to cast that thing out. Not send them back out there with the other devils. It's the way that seems right. Can't have that in my church. Well, the church is full of sick people. Everybody in here is sick. Everybody in the church is crazy. Everybody in the church is lame. Everybody in churches need help. That's why we're here. Church is a hospital. 
Yeah, we look good with our lame, sick, crazy selves. We smell good, and we just as lame and crazy as all get out. But that's why we keep on coming. Have I got a witness? That's why we're here. Because we know that as, as crazy and lame as we are, we know that at least if we can get here, it's some medicine over here. It's some deliverance over here. A, a breakthrough can happen if I can at least get there. Break free from the spirit of pride. Break free from it. Break free from it. The spirit of pride. Pray. The spirit of pride. It's in our pulpits. It's in our choir. It's pride in the pews. Pride on the usher bar. Pride on the nurse's bar. We got to get rid of it. How do I know we need to get rid of it? First off, the Bible said. Secondly, uh, most, of, most of y'all in here know me. I was either raised with you as a kid or y'all knew me since I was little. And we know that that's what our uh, pastor emeritus taught us. First off, love. Help out, help each other. Come together with each other. Pray for one another. How can you help each other, pray for one another, and still be prideful? The two can't walk together. So I know we was raised right to get rid of the pride. My last bit of encouragement before I sit down is don't jump the ship. People left, said I can't stay because of foolishness in the church. So I've, actually had, I've actually had, Sister Ray, I've had folks say that to me. I couldn't stay in Samaritan because of foolishness over there. All right, it's foolishness everywhere. But if that's how you feel about it, go ahead on. I can't stay over there because there's too much mess over there. Dealing with all that mess. Some folks said that to me. It's too much mess at the church over there. They don't know what they're doing. And every time somebody came to me and say that, I thought about Noah and the flood. And I said to one brother, I said, uh, you think on the ark, there wasn't no mess in the ark. All them animals. was no mess in there. You think that Noah wasn't considered to be foolish for building an ark in a spot that ain't never rained ever before? You think, that, you think, you think he wouldn't look at as foolish? You got a foolish preacher in a boat with a bunch of mess. You read, the, you read this Bible, that's what it was. All them animals, it was some mess in there. But the thing of it is, is that when the flood came, everybody on the outside of all the mess and the crazy preaching preacher got, uh, got killed, drowned in the flood. Those that was in there with the foolish preacher and all them animals and them foolish folk and all that mess got saved. Don't leave because of the mess. Because I'm going to tell you, if you leave this church because of mess, don't go to no other church because you're going to take your mess over there and mess them up. That spirit of pride to say, I can't, I can't deal with them folk. All right, cool. Peace out. Get rid of that Leviathan spirit. Thinking you're better than folk. Can't nobody tell you nothing? God is moving. I didn't say he's changing, but he's moving. Moses had the grace for the Red Sea. Joshua had the grace for the Jordan. And that's where we're at. Get rid of it. Get rid of that spirit. We cannot move forward and work together with a proud spirit. That don't mean that if you're wrong, you can't be corrected. God knows I need it. I thank God for Sister Fields, Sister Ray, Mother Stargell, they'll get you. <laughs> Mother Johnson will get you. You got the Holy Ghost? Yes, mother. No, you don't. <laughs> She'll tell you that. And she was right, because I was just saying it because I was in church, but I wouldn't, I didn't have the Holy Ghost. She was right, I didn't. But be corrected. But we're going to do it in love. But when it's done in love, receive correction. And then give God praise that he's still looking down on you to send somebody your way to give you correction. Amen, somebody. Can I get a witness here?
Amen. Don't lead a ship. Stay with us and get rid of that pride, that, that, that paltry spirit, that Leviathan. Because it ain't going to do you no good. You're going to kill yourself and others. May as well stay with the ship and do the work of the ministry in love, without pride. Help your brother. Help your sister. Help the ministry. Help the mission. Help the job. Ain't no point in fighting against each other. Receive correction and love. Get rid of your prideful spirit and go on with God and follow after the Holy Ghost. Amen.